This video will demonstrate my strategies for getting through the large cavern in Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. First, we need to talk about loadout. On sleeve A, I have Acerbatus and Sapiens Fio. On sleeve B, I have Nitesco and Volaticus. And on sleeve C, I have the Venus Glyph Union with Dominus Agony. As far as equipment goes, my main strategy is to maximize intelligence. The Royal Crown and the Robe de Colite are both great for that. They come from completing the training hall. I actually don't have any footwear that boosts intelligence, so I just have the Valkyrie Greaves on in that slot. For accessories, I'm using the Moon Ring and the Magician Ring. Of course, if you're playing during the daytime, you're going to want to swap out the Moon Ring for the Sun Ring or some other accessory. In this first room, immediately fire Achirbatus twice. This should be enough to kill all the ten men. If it somehow isn't, you can augment the damage with the Death Ring or Dominus Agony. It will also slow the Cave Trolls, making them much easier to deal with. This next room has two Demon Lords. It's very helpful to not spawn the second one until the first one is dead. Their movement is erratic, so this is tricky. It's even worth getting hit if that's what it takes. The Demon Lords usually try to fly above you, so it's good to fly low to lure them downward. Then you can fly up again and hit them with Nitesco some more. Repeat this process until they're dead. They usually won't manage to cast Globus before they die, but if they do, just drop to the ground and absorb the glyph. Globus is pretty difficult to avoid, so it's much easier to just absorb the glyph and not have to deal with it. The next room has a double hammer. You're given a good amount of space, so you can use it to your advantage. Fire Nitesco while flying backwards, and then at the end of the room, fly over him. This provides a pretty safe way of damaging him. This room is mostly a warm-up for what's coming later, so take a little bit of time to get used to this enemy. The next room introduces the Weapon Master. He always seems to open with the same attack, so I let him commit to doing it to the left, and then I get behind him to do some free damage. He may seem intimidating, but he doesn't have that many attacks. Like with the last room, I think it's a good idea to take some time to learn this guy's attack patterns. He's not complicated, he just does a lot of damage and has a lot of health. If you get hit here, don't be afraid to heal. The chests in the large cavern often contain high potions, because the developers knew you'd need them. In this round, I end up using super potions because I have a bunch from doing the training hall repeatedly, but you can use whatever you want. Minestrone, curry, ramen noodles, and killer fish barbecue can all be found at the shop and they're all good value. When they don't contain a high potion, the chests here will usually contain an onyx, diamond, or gold ore which can be sold for money if you're worried about that. This room contains two double hammers, which is slightly trickier than one, but the same strategy overall works. In this run, I managed to get them to basically overlap, which is definitely very helpful, but it's by no means necessary. Just be patient, play it safe, and keep going until one of them is dead. You already know how to deal with it when there's just one of them. All they drop is gold ore, and there's easier ways to get it. The next room has two weapon masters, and honestly, it's pretty hard to deal with two at once. I fly over them, but not until they've both committed to attacking rightward. Then, I pause the game, put on the death ring, and switch to Glyph Sleeve C. I activate Dominus Agony and use Venus four times. Then I immediately turn off Dominus Agony to stop losing health. Then I take off the Death Ring. If you work fast, you can kill them both while they're both still facing rightwards. Venus has a long enough range that it's not at all hard to hit both of them with it. This next room doesn't have anything you haven't seen before. You can use the Achirbatus Glyph to take care of the Ten Men. The first Ten Man spawns pretty close to the door, so it's actually kind of hard to hit him with Achirbatus before he hits you. If you've forgotten to take off the Death Ring, you'll definitely regret it here. Apart from the Tin Men, this room only contains a single Demon Lord. You've seen this guy before, but don't get complacent. His movement is erratic and it's easy to get hit here. The next room has a much tougher combination of enemies, a Weapon Master and a Double Hammer. This is the first room I don't really have a prescriptive strategy for. You're gonna have to improvise a little bit. The basic idea is to fly up near the top of the room where it's hard for the Double Hammer to get you. It's also important to keep in mind where the Weapon Master is at all times. When you can do it safely, swoop down and get some hits. The Double Hammer has less health, so it's easier to kill him first, but if you're in a position where you can only hit the Weapon Master, then go ahead and do it. Once either is eliminated, you're down to just one foe you already know how to deal with. I don't use Glyph Unions here, but if you're having trouble, it's not a bad idea at all. Apart from Venus, a very strong Glyph Unit is Universitas. You can perform Universitas by combining Luminatio with Umbra. It basically just hits the whole screen for a lot of damage. Unfortunately, unlike the room with two Weapon Masters, I haven't worked out a strategy to cheese this room. I don't think the Death Ring is very useful here. If you're good enough at this game that you're confident you can beat this room without taking a hit, you probably don't need my advice. Anyway, with that out of the way, all that remains is the boss. 
The boss is the Chinese hopping vampire Jiang Shi. After everything you've gone through to get here, he's not all that hard, but he can still kill you if you're unprepared. The biggest problem with him is that you have to go through the whole large cavern just to reach him. It's easy to be low on health or recovery items by the time you get here. He has a glyph you can absorb, and I get it just for the sake of getting it, but it's not very good. That lightning orb chasing you makes it tricky to get. As you can see, I barely managed to snag it. It seems like he uses his glyph right after casting the lightning orb. So, when he casts the lightning orb, I immediately try to create as much space as I can. Once you've gotten his glyph, you can kill him. If you have hearts left over, there's little reason not to just use glyph unions. One thing that's interesting about this boss is when you beat him, he doesn't die. He just gets sealed. If you attack him while he's in this state, he'll wake up again. If you do this, you can fight him over and over again if you want. Other than the novelty, the main reason to do this is for experience, which he's a pretty good source of. Except for non repeatable bosses, he gives the most experience of any enemy in the game. However, he doesn't give that much more than most of the other large cavern enemies, and grinding him is risky. If you want to save in the middle of grinding Jiang Shi, you have to leave the large cavern entirely, and when you do, it'll be reset back to its initial state. Anyway, to defeat this boss, just use Nitesuko and keep your distance. The lightning orbs are a pain, but their movement is predictable. The zombies he summons can easily be destroyed by shooting Nitesuko at them. This is the opposite of the demon mode, where it was much easier to just absorb the glyph. I hit him here just to demonstrate how to wake him up. The green chest at the end of the large cavern will contain one of four prizes. Three of them are pieces of the Minerva equipment set. Unfortunately, I don't think the Minerva equipment is a very good reward. While it has the highest defense of any equipment in the game, defense just doesn't do much for you in this game. You'd also have to run through the large cavern several times to get all three pieces. And the fourth item is the Alexandrite, which is easier and faster to obtain from the training hall, in my opinion. The biggest reason to complete the training hall is for the sake of Rina's quest. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.